John in Character presents Hidden Heroes of History. Stories that make you wonder, Hey, how did I not know that? Featuring your historian in chief, Jonathan Cormer. Ahem. <clears throat> oh, uh, and his trusty hedgehog sidekick, Reginald T. Hedgehog. The dawn, it breaks. We should set out as soon as possible. Uh, excuse me, Jonathan, uh, do you think we can even make it? Don't lose your nerve on me now, Pokey. Uh, fiddlesticks, man. I'm a hedgehog, not a mountain goat. My little legs don't stand a chance against these steep cliffs, and... But we can't turn back now. And I just don't know if my spines will protect me against... The Abominable Snowhog! <laughs> Wait, 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 time out, time out. The Abominable Snowhog? Why, yes, of course. Okay, back to the game. <clears throat> the, abominable the Abominable Snowhog! snowhog. Mr. Reg, there are no abominable anythings on Mount Everest. Roar. What? Then... What are we pretending to be so afraid of? Well, climbing Mount Everest is an incredible feat of strength, endurance, passion, athleticism, survival skills, talent. Uh, yes, yes, all my natural qualities. <laughs> uh-huh. So, you're saying you find nothing at all challenging and scary about a climb up the tallest mountain on Earth at 29,029 feet? Ooh, Jonathan, what does this green light mean? Aha! So you do find it intimidating, which is why you're avoiding the question. Uh, no, really, the green light is on. What? Oh, um, hello, folks. <laughs> oh, do you mean we've started? Yes, Mr. Reg. It seems our friends at home have been listening uh, longer than we thought. Ha 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 ha. But that's A-OK, -okay, because this is a perfect introduction for another episode of Hidden Heroes of History. Ooh, and uh, why is that? I'm so glad you asked. It's because today, we'll be learning about... Tenzing Norgay. Ah, Mr. Norgay. A truly heroic fellow. Oh, that's right, Reg. How did you know? Hmm. Took a wild guess based on the name of the show. Right. Uh, well, Tenzing Norgay was one of the first two people to reach the summit of Mount Everest. And uh, by summit, you mean the tippy top of the mountain? That's right. He climbed all 29,029 feet in 1953. Well, color me extremely impressed. Are you being sarcastic, Reg? Well, usually, yes, Jonathan. I am being very sarcastic. Uh, however, this time, I'm quite serious. This must have been an incredible accomplishment. An astounding one. Mr. Norgay was a true mountaineering expert and went on numerous expeditions that eventually led him straight to the, well, tippy top. Well, let's officially get this show on the road, shall we? I can't wait to learn more about this brave fellow. I couldn't agree more. Though there are some conflicting stories of his early life, many say that Tenzing Norgay was born in Tibet, and at a young age, went to work for a Sherpa community that lived near Everest. Sherpas, of course, are people native to the mountain regions of Nepal and the Himalayas. They have an incredibly rich culture, full of their own unique traditions, and many have a deep knowledge of their mountainous surroundings. Very good, Reg. Now you can color me impressed. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you. I am amazing, I know. Their deep knowledge of their surrounding land has meant that some Sherpas find work in mountaineering, guiding people from all over the world and making their very own expeditions to the top of Everest. So, mountaineering was the trade of Mr. Norgay? Yes. 
Tenzing Norgay joined his first expedition when he was 20 years old as a high-altitude porter, uh, which meant he carried and was responsible for many of the group's vital supplies. I say, such courage for someone so young. Very true, and his career has inspired so many others in recent years to accomplish the same feat, some only 15 and 16 years old. Inconceivable! Well, Mr. Norgay continued his adventures throughout the 1940s and 50s. He took part in both British and Swiss attempts to summit the mountain, eventually considered a full-fledged member of the expedition team. It was a great step forward for the way we acknowledged the very important roles of Sherpas on these climbs. Well, I should say so. Seems to me they are incredibly crucial and must always be official members of the team. I salute them. I think I'll join you in that salute, Reg. Now, even before cresting the top of the mountain, Mr. Norgay broke climbing records and helped find the paths up the mountain that would eventually make way for others to accomplish the feat. A record breaker before reaching the summit, you say? That's right. He set new climbing records by reaching over 28,000 feet on some of his earlier expeditions. So close to the top. So close. And yet, when this took place, he would still have a few years to go before eventually summiting the mountain. Why is it so difficult to reach the peak, Jonathan? It seems to me if there are no abominable snow hogs, their path should be remarkably clear. Well, Mr. Reg... Nature is a truly powerful thing. More powerful than a snow hog? Way more powerful, Reg. The mountain is wrought with dangerous storms, thinning oxygen, and avalanches. Oh my. Yeah, and back when Mr. Norgay was climbing mountains, there was less technology and research available to them to make the way safer. These were true pioneers of mountaineering. Now, delay no further. Tell me the story of how he got to the top. Before I do, my goodness, I have to tell you about how Mr. Norgay saved a life. What's that now? That's right. In 1953, Mr. Norgay was climbing with a team that included Edmund Hillary, a New Zealand climber. Mr. Hillary fell into a crevice, but before he hit the bottom, Mr. Norgay quickly secured his rope using his ice pick and saved Mr. Hillary's life. Brava! Quick and ingenious thinking! From that point on, Edmund Hillary decided that Mr. Norgay would always be his chosen climbing partner. Well, I should say so. Would you always choose me as your adventuring partner, Reg? Hmm, I don't know. Oh, come on, Reg. Well, let's see. If you can name the biggest weakness of the abominable snow hog and how you might defeat one in an encounter, I'll consider it. Ah, uh, well, even though you're a real goof sometimes, I would always pick you, Reg. You can be my wingman anytime. Oh, Iceman, of course you would. <laughs> oh, and its biggest weakness is a grilled cheese sandwich, in case you were wondering. Right, anyways... In March of 1953, both Tenzing Norgay and Edmund Hillary were part of an expedition that was constantly being interrupted by terrible and dangerous weather, forcing teams of climbers to head back to the base camp. Ooh, is this when they make it to the top? Well, the night before their final ascent, winds were battering against their tent pitched tantalizingly close to the top of the mountain. The storm was terrible and could mean that the two would have to turn around and head back to the base camp. Mr. Norgay's dreams were on the line. He had gotten close so many times and felt this would be his best shot. He couldn't sleep and kept telling himself that it must be this time. But the storm had to clear first. Ooh, I'm on pins and needles. <laughs> then, on May 29th, 1953... Mr. Norgay and Mr. Hillary woke up at their camp, determined to finish the journey, and found that the storm had cleared, and... And they began preparations to leave, and... And they found Mr. Hillary's boots frozen solid. Oh, 
Is that a joke? Nope. But don't worry. After heating them back up, Tenzing Norgay and Edmund Hillary made their final ascent of Mount Everest, reaching the highest point on Earth and becoming the first recorded pair to do it. Huzzah! They did it! 15 minutes at the top of Everest with one photograph. Tenzing Norgay standing with his ice pick. Such an extraordinary story. Such an extraordinary dream. You've got that right. A dream to accomplish never before attempted feats. A dream to carve out new paths for future explorers by climbing up the road less traveled. A dream to reach new heights. A dream to stand upon the summits of the unknown. To seek out new life and new civilization. To boldly go where no one has gone before. And I think they get the picture. A true hero of history. Hidden Heroes of History is a John and Character production. This story was written by Molly Murphy and performed by Jonathan Cormer. Sound recording and production by Jermaine Hamilton at Studio Circle Recordings. For more information about today's hero, go to johnincharacter.com. Oh, and if our storytelling brings you some joy, and a few laughs, we'd be so grateful if you'd help us live happily ever after by writing a review. It's one of the best ways for others to find our geeky tales. But before you go, please hit the subscribe button so future episodes will automatically show up in your podcast library. Now, go be the hero of your own story, and we'll see you next Once Upon a Time.